Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video, we'll be discussing sorbitol. So one of the things to note in terms of the metabolism of monosaccharides is once the monosaccharide enters the cell, um, it can be phosphorylated so that it prevents and sort of traps the monosaccharide within the cell because usually it could freely transport back out of the cell. But when you phosphorylate the monosaccharide, it requires a transporter for it to move back out. That's one mechanism of metabolizing a monosaccharide. Another one is to convert it into a polyol, and that's a sugar alcohol. So glucose can be converted into fructose, but first it's converted into sorbitol, which is a sugar alcohol. And this uh, reaction is done by reducing the aldehyde group on glucose. And what this does is it produces an additional hydroxyl group. So how is sorbitol synthesized? Well, there's an enzyme known as aldose reductase, which reduces glucose and produces sorbitol. And the enzyme aldose reductase is found in many tissues, including the retina, lens, Schwann cells of peripheral nerves, liver, kidneys, placenta, red blood cells, and in cells of the ovaries and seminal vesicles. Now, what happens to this sorbitol? So, sorbitol dehydrogenase oxidizes sorbitol to produce fructose. And the enzyme sorbitol dehydrogenase is found in the liver, ovaries, and the seminal vesicles. And an important thing to note is this pathway in the conversion of glucose into fructose via sorbitol in the seminal vesicles benefits the sperm cells which use the fructose as a main carbohydrate energy source. That's everything we're discussing on sorbitol today. I hope it's been useful. Thanks for watching.